thank you for viewing this Dan Foss Drives extended startup video. This video will provide quick startup instructions for a Dan Foss VLT FC202 AquaDrive. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Smart Start feature in the VLT AquaDrive to accomplish a closed loop constant pressure application. Start by using the quick menu and entering Q4, Smart Start. Press OK to accept that and enter the menu. First question asked is which language you want. To make changes in the Smart Start, you press the OK key to highlight the value and the up and down arrows will scroll you through the choices. I'm going to continue in English. OK to accept that, the down arrow will move you on to the next screen. Press OK to use the Smart Start setup or cancel to skip it. So we're going to press OK to resume. Regional settings, I'm going to choose North America rather than the default of international for 60 hertz motor data. The motor type is asynchronous, I'll continue on. Now I'm going to enter the motor data. The particular motor I'm using today is a 3 quarter horsepower 230 volt, 60 hertz, the motor current is 2.9 amps. The motor speed unit, this is going to ask you what you would like to use for your speed unit. It can be either RPM or hertz, so when the motor speed is displayed, it will display in that unit. I'm going to choose hertz. Motor nominal speed, my, my motor has a speed of 1735. RPM that was got right off the motor nameplate. It's a sine wave filter connected to the output. We're going to choose no because I don't have one in this application. If you do, it'll ask you to choose a switching frequency that applies for the sine wave. Run an automatic motor adaptation procedure. This is a motor self tuning function. I'm going to say yes and let this procedure be executed. Press down to move on. At this point, pressing the OK key will start the complete AMA procedure. Press hand on to start. This procedure can take anywhere from 1 to 10 minutes depending on the motor size. So I'm going to press hand on to start the AMA. Once the AMA procedure is complete, you'll see this screen. It's telling me to press OK to continue and accept the values that the motor tuning has learned. Now we're going to move on to the pump ramp times. You can choose these, they're user defined of course, ramp up time and ramp down time. We'll leave the defaults of 10 seconds up and 20 seconds down for this example. The application type, we're going to be using a single pump or motor. I have other choices here where I can do basic cascade control, master follower, motor alternation. We're going to choose the single pump or motor since that's what's involved in our application. The configuration mode mode. We're going to choose closed loop because we want to use pressure transducer feedback. So closed loop for the configuration mode. Moving on. I'm going to choose the motor low and high speed limit. The low speed limit is where you would want to put your motor low speed for submersible pumps or any type of pump that will be damaged for running below that speed. In any event, the motor will never run below the low limit. S same applies for the high limit. I'm going to operate the pump between 30 and 60 hertz. The reference or feedback unit, there's multiple choices here. We're going to choose feed, uh, a feedback unit of PSI for our application. The feedback source, this is where you tell the drive what type of transducer you're using. We have choices of 0 to 10 volt connected on analog input 54 of the VFD. 0 to 10 volts on analog input 53, 4 to 20 milliamps on analog input 54, I'm going to choose that because the particular transducer I'm using for this application is a 4 to 20 milliamp transducer. It's warning me to check the dip switch settings before connecting the feedback signal. There's a dip switch behind the LCP for both analog inputs, one for 53 and one for 54. The default in the voltage position, which is to the left for each switch. This switch is for 53, this is for 54. Since I've chosen a feedback unit of 4 to 20 milliamps at analog input 54, 
I need to gently move the dip switch to the current position on analog input 54. You can accomplish this with a screwdriver and just a slight pry and it'll move into the current position. You have to be careful because those switches are brittle. Press OK to continue. Now it's going to ask me for the low and high feedback values of the transducer. The particular transducer I'm using is 4 to 20 milliamp equals 0 to 100 psi. So I'm going to leave those the default settings. Select the type of set point. I'm going to be using an internal rather than an external set point. So I'll choose internal here, move on to the next screen, and now I'll enter my set point of 75 psi. This message here is telling me now the basic configuration of the startup is complete. So at this point, any start command condition will take effect and start the drive. Press OK. <clears throat> at this point, I can press back to quit or OK to go under the water pump parameters. There are further sets of menus that can be used for the advanced water application features. For this tutorial, we're not going to go into those, so I'm going to press the back key and essentially I'm finished with the setup. Closed loop, constant pressure, put the drive in auto mode, and it's ready to go to maintain a set point of 75 PSI based on feedback. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.